Hi guys, it's Dr. Shelley, and once again, we are back to another Friday. Um, still in July, uh, this is July 24th now, um, and it's four o'clock, and so it's time for us to be discussing um, what's been going on with COVID this week. And as usual, never a dull moment um, when it comes to this uh, topic. Uh, it definitely has the attention of pretty much everyone. Um, as you know, I'm Dr. Shelley uh, Coleman-Glover. I'm a board-certified uh, gynecologist who practices anti-aging, hormone balancing, and uh, sexual and just overall well wellness. I am located in Central Florida, in Claremont, Florida, which is basically 20 minutes um, west of Orange um, County Lake, uh, uh, excuse me, Orlando. Um, and I've been doing this COVID Live uh, to just kind of help us all kind of get through this and kind of understand, uh, uh, get the latest updates on what's been going on in the last week. Of course, it changes by the minute. Um, and uh, to try to make uh, whatever you want to say, applesauce out of apples. And also, to since this isn't going away now, we kind of understand that we're going to basically be living with COVID for a while um, and uh, hopefully not as bad as it is, hopefully um, we will have some more control, but we need to learn how to um, survive. There's a question, some people say it's not just, um, uh, are you gonna get COVID, but when are you gonna get COVID? So we hope not, we hope that there will be a, a vaccination that is uh, becomes available um, and is uh, adequate and will work well on people and can help uh, to uh, vaccinate the population and, and kind of balance out and keep people from getting it. But for now, until that occurs, our goal is to do the best we can to be the healthiest we can uh, to get through this. Um, and yes, there's always a controversy and I try to keep this out of the political realm and I'm really excited to at least finally start hearing some of our uh, politicians say that, um, which I think is really important. This is a medical problem. This is a health problem and we, we really should not get um, all wrapped up in all of the politics. This is really about uh, people uh, living, dying and surviving um, with COVID. So let's just give you a little bit on what's going on um, in my office first, then we'll go over the statistics, we'll talk a little bit about um, what's been going on this week, and then as I told you last week, what we're going to do is start talking about things that we can be doing ourselves to kind of boost our immune system and to kind of help us get through this. And I've kind of gone over them, if you look at some of the prior episodes, um, about immunity, boosting immunity and stuff like that. But what I thought would be interesting, what I've been asked to do is to actually hone in on one particular thing and kind of tell you why you might want to use that or take that or do whatever it is um, uh, that's recommended. The uh, controversy with mask continues to rage, but you can go back and watch my original mask um, uh, discussion. And I do still um, recommend, since the majority of people actually are not as healthy as they think they are, that, that, that mask wearing is done. It does decrease the transmission, both if you have it and also uh, if the person that you are interacting with um, less than six feet has it. So it doesn't hurt. There are a billion masks. I'm still on hunt for the perfect one. And as soon as I find it, I'm going to let you know. Uh, but uh, something is better than nothing. And and it has been documented to decrease transmission. And until you know that you're bulletproof and your immunity is really solid and that you're as healthy as you can be, then I recommend it highly. Uh, in Miami, uh, one of the things I, I said I wasn't going to get into that, but real quick because we we're talking about masks um miami has actually made it my mandatory and they are issuing quite hefty fines and so it's a hundred dollars for the first uh, two injunctions and then it jumps to five hundred dollars and then i think by the fifth one if you're caught they actually will put you in jail so uh they are not playing games they're very serious because that is where the numbers have been really escalating out of control so in my office, 
Um, what we do is when, when you schedule an appointment, we have actually spaced out the appointments. Uh, we've always, as I said, practiced universal precautions, but there are a couple of extra things that we do do. Of course, all rooms are sanitized completely before you come in and also as soon as um, um, individual clients leave. And uh, we don't have uh, more than uh, two people spaced completely out in the waiting room. We have people, if it starts to get to be more people, then we have you wait in your car um, until we can get you into the office. We are doing COVID testing for our clients. Um, there are two different facilities we use. One, we're getting the results back in five days, and one, we're getting the results back in uh, two to three days. No, excuse me, excuse me. One, we're getting the results back in seven days. The other one, we're getting the results back in uh, currently a uh, two-day turnaround. Um, and it's based on insurance as, or if you wish to be a, a self-pay. Uh, so if that is something that you are having difficulty getting, uh, we are offering that to uh, patients. If you're not a patient, you can get established to be a client and we can do your testing for you. Uh, because there's the waits here, I don't know about other places, but in Lake County, there are people lining up at 3 a.m. Um, to get their testing. Uh, hi, Kanisha. So the uh, besides that, uh, we also have um, invested in a air purification system um, to help to decrease the uh, the uh, risk of basically all viruses in this and, and bacteria and, and all sorts of uh, things that are floating around in the air and neutralizing those so that um, in addition to wearing masks and doing all of the other uh, sanitizing things that we that our air is being uh, purified so uh, we're really excited about that and we have one that works in universally and then we also also have a, a personal one that we're wearing so I don't have it on right now because I'm at home uh, and what else do we have? Uh, both practitioners, myself and my nurse practitioner, are open. We are still doing elective procedures as well as doing full uh, uh, regular patient consults. Still doing telehealth uh, primarily on Mondays and Fridays, but the office, as I said, is open uh, five days a week. Still short-staffed, so if you are reaching us and having any difficulty, please leave a message. Please be patient with us, and we will get back to you. But we, my, my girls are doing the best they can, and they are definitely working their little uh, behinds off. And uh, so bear with us, but we, we are doing it with a smile, and we're all going to get through this together. What else is going on in the world? Let's go over the stats, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it, okay? So what are our stats for this week? Uh, worldwide, we're up to 15.5 million cases of COVID. Uh, Death rate is 634,000. Survivors, 8.87. So that's good. Million, excuse me, 8.87 million worldwide. Uh, within the United States, as we said last week, unfortunately, we are winning the race at um, deaths and at um, the number of cases, which is not a race we want to be winning. So this is something that um, we, sh we, unlike other countries that are actually um, stemming their uh uh, coronavirus epidemic, we are going the wrong way. And so definitely need to take heed, understand what is not working and make steps to make it um, uh, better. The number of deaths in the United States is 147,000. Um, That's up um, another 6,000 um, from last week. Um, and the uh, survivors in the United States is 1.23 million. So that's great. Um, we're really excited that we do have a, a significant portion of people that are um, survivors. Um, but once again, um, one death is one death too many if we can avoid it. In Florida, yes, everyone knows we are um, the leading hotspot now. Uh, we, although California is still uh, uh, beating us in the number of uh, uh uh, coronavirus uh, cases and uh, deaths. Uh, Florida is um, now um, surging the most and will probably um, uh, be number two. We were number three. We're gonna, about to beat out New York. And um, this is, once again, a race that we really don't want to win. Uh, so we're, we're, Florida is definitely working on trying to uh, stem things. Hi, Tanita. Um, it's, it's definitely trying to make some moves. I know it doesn't look like that sometimes to the people on the outside, but there are different things. I can say that Floridians, from what I can see um, on a whole, have started to change their tune uh, um, towards uh, 
maintaining more of the social distancing and, and you know, I don't like that word, let's say physical distancing and more of the mask wearing uh, and actually staying home more too. So I think that people are aware uh, the days of not knowing anyone or having heard about COVID and thinking that it's something way over there have gone away. If you live in Florida and you haven't been exposed to someone that has uh, been diagnosed uh, with COVID-19, that would be pretty amazing because almost everyone has. And unfortunately, um, we are now seeing people um, who are having family members, not just up in the Northeast who have uh, died from COVID, but actually here in Florida. And that's what we were hoping we didn't have to see before people started changing their behavior, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, the, we had the highest number of deaths in Florida. Um, and I, I did not, I, I can't find where I wrote the number down. It's, it's definitely over 170. I think it's 179 and maybe 174. So don't hold me exactly to it. Um, and that death, it's not, e the deaths are reported as they come in. So it, it, that's not that 179 people died exactly today. Uh, but that's when those deaths got reported. So they're not getting reported more than once. So this is the highest amount of deaths being reported today. Um, they're saying that, that, that there weren't, uh, um, that many that actually died in the last 24 hours, but it kind of gets clumped based on how it gets reported. The, the percentage of positive testing, so once again, the whole thought process is, oh, don't test. If you don't test, you know, the reason why you're seeing more cases is because you're testing more. Um, well, the, the percentage is actually going up. So it's, it's actually, um, even though we're testing more, we were the number of people that are testing positive in that group is going up if that makes sense it gets a little confusing so it's not you know yeah you can say the absolute number but you're actually looking you have to look at the percentage of people that are actually testing positive and that does mean that you it's not just that more people are getting um, tested there are more people out there with COVID-19 so the percentage rate, when we were back in quarantine, our percentage rate of, of, of positive uh, patients was more like, um, I think we were at one point down, all the way down under, like at one point we were down at like 2.6%, and then we were kind of holding about 4%, 4 to 5%. We're now overall at, in Florida, and we're at 12.26%, and uh, this week it's been at 18% testing positive. Um, the... The number of hospitalizations are up 3,000 more, and so that's from last week. So there are 23,000 people um, hospitalized in Florida compared to 20,000, uh, and a month ago compared to 15,000. So this is escalating um, pretty quickly. Uh, the deaths are up to 4,805 in Florida, up from 4,102, and we have surged over 400. 2,000 uh, people with um, being diagnosed positive with COVID-19 um, in Florida. Um, so pretty scary numbers. Um, and it, and it, it is real. There are people, I can tell you that if you had asked me this time last month, if I knew anyone right here in Florida that was uh, positive, I would have not known anyone. Um, and now I can say I know personally right here, in immediate surroundings, probably um, eight, eight to ten. So it's it's and so it's it's here, it's here, and 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 I and it's not just me. I can tell you when I talk to other people, they're basically saying, "Oh my God, you know, all these different people are getting diagnosed." And yes, some of them are lucky and are completely asymptomatic, but then other people have mild symptoms, and um, and then other people, of course, get severely ill. And unfortunately, that's the the scary part is we don't know who is gonna be one of the lucky ones and who's not. Yes, by boosting our immune system, we hope um, that if we are doing the right things that we can be one of the lucky ones but it takes effort you know you, you know I always tell people the definition of insanity is doing the same thing expecting different results if you're smoking you eat whatever you want you know you're ingesting tons of fast food and junk food and 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 you don't sleep and you don't exercise and you don't know how to spell vitamin and and you think that you're just going to be one of the lucky ones um uh, I would say that's not necessarily a good uh, thought process. So if you're really serious about wanting to be somebody that is a COVID survivor, you really, this should be a wake up time to actually take 
your health into consideration and see what can you do to start making it better. And maybe you can't do everything at once and I, Rome wasn't built in a day. That's okay. But we could start working on getting ourselves healthy. And that's I'm not just speaking. I'm not preaching. I, I'm doing the same thing to myself. So I can say that because I'm one of the people. Uh, the median um, age in uh, Florida is still holding um, in the 40s, 40, 41. Uh, uh, Orange County, uh, which is where Orlando's located, had been as low as 30 um, for the, the average um, age of person being diagnosed. Um, it's down at 35, so it means a little bit more people are, um, a little bit more older people are getting diagnosed now in Orange County. The numbers uh, for Orange County, um, which is uh, Orlando, uh, it's uh, now almost a 26,000, um, um, is 25.59 thousand. Um, and up from 21.7 last week. Uh, hospitalization 690 up from um, 618 and deaths up 164 from 103. So that is an additional um, uh, uh, 61 deaths in, in a week um, in Orange County. Lake County, uh, the numbers are up from uh, 3,116 to 3,800. Uh, uh, 59,000 uh, and once again the hospitalizations are up um, to 160 from 145 much smaller county just so you're clear a much number smaller number of people so sometimes I hear people saying well Lake County is doing so much better not necessarily that Lake County is doing so much better as much as um, uh, Lake County doesn't have the population as densely populated and the um, Yes, we still have room in, 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 in the ICUs at this point. Um, well, we have what, uh, give me one second and I'll tell you about the ICUs. Um, the, um, so Lake County is at 160 um, in the hospital and 36, um, uh, 38 deaths. Um, so only up two deaths um, over from last week. So that's a blessing. Um, so the death rate in uh, Lake County is definitely not increasing as quickly, um, which is a blessing. Uh, so we're happy about the, 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 we can take the positives. As far as the ICUs, the ICUs are getting very tight. And there's some, you know, there's people saying, oh, well, the, the, the ICUs are full of other people, not COVID patients. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If the ICUs are full, the ICUs are full. And when the ICUs get full and there's no more there's more no more places to put the severely ill uh, patients, that's when you'll start seeing the death rate go markedly higher. That's what happened in New York, um, besides the fact that we didn't know as much about the virus and didn't have as many um, treatments. So don't don't get caught up on the fact that, you know, what the ICU is full of. We we discussed this whole thing last week um, when we had Dr. Evans on and we were talking about the fact that a lot of people, one of the uh, fallouts from all of the, the this COVID um, uh, pandemic is that a lot of people have been um, uh, afraid to go out, afraid to get to their doctor. They haven't been able to access their doctor's office. Um, and so their health has declined. And so they then are ending up very, very ill and ending up in the hospital for non-COVID related things. But then that's still taking up a hospital bed um, and that still puts the COVID patients at risk as well. Um, so as well as the people that the non-COVID patients. So, you know, um, we, we don't just need ICU beds for COVID patients. So everyone needs to have ICU beds um, available. In, in Lake, in, in, in um, Central Florida, what's happening is that the hospitals are prepared for what they they call overflow. So they're able to create ICU beds at this point if that occurs. Yes. So the 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 the, the um, so what uh, uh, Tadita is saying is that the the number of cases of younger people are increasing as the counties are opening up. She and and you're in uh, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, so so. Uh, and this is true, and this is what we saw in Florida, and that's when we started seeing our numbers start to go through the roof is when we had the reopening. And yes, we knew that there was going to be some increase in numbers with the reopening, but we did not want this exponential thing. And that's the, as we've been saying all along, what happens when you equate reopening with going back to the way things were before the COVID, um, uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic started? You can't do that. 
You can't. Um, there, I would love to. We all would love to go back to the way it used to be. But that's the mistake people are making. If they would just do what we have to do in the short term to protect ourselves and to decrease the transmission, then the, the, the ability to go back to life as usual will come faster than what's happening, which is where people are trying to force it. It's not working. And then you have um, these these massive surges. And one of the things that the um, mayor of Miami um, pointed out um, is that yes you have these young people who once again think that they're bulletproof and that they're not going to succumb and let me tell you there are patients in the hospitals and in the ICUs that are under 30. Yes, it's not the majority. No, no. Um, The majority of people that get COVID who are younger are going to be okay. But we don't know what the long-term effects of this disease are. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. They are finding when they they, uh, follow patients up who were supposedly asymptomatic that they have, some of these people are having issues. They have lung changes on their x-rays. They have um, uh, changes in their brains. We don't know what the long-term effects of this are. And they just... uh, unfortunately for our guys um, and our young guys they need to take this seriously um, they um, there's a small study um, that came out um, I think it was this week um, I get everything's blurring guys but that where they found that there was a lot of, remember the coronavirus is everywhere in the body they've concentrated on the fact that it was in the lungs because that's where we were seeing that there was an issue but there's a whole nother side of this virus where it appears there's there's several different ways that people can become severely ill with the due to the coronavirus and potentially die one is the whole lung the breathing um, aspect of it the other is that this disease causes clotting it causes little um, microemboli and in some people it causes big ones and so people there are people that are dying from the virus because of um, because of, of, of of a blood clot that it leads to a heart attack or to a stroke. Well, they also are finding that they're in all parts of the body. So they can be in the kidney, they can be um, in the liver, it can be um, anywhere in the feet, in the in the legs. And so, 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 and what are the long-term effects of this? And we, we don't know. But there is a study that just showed that... Um, that it's actually in the testicles and that um, and in the areas where the uh, of the testicles where sperm is produced so we may have all these we have all these young um, people who are getting uh, coronavirus are asymptomatic um, and there may be a, 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 a issue further down the line where we have a a, a, a huge amount of uh, infertility, um, male infertility that comes down the pike. We don't know for sure. It was just one study, but they're definitely looking into this. They did find that there was more virus in the, um, the people who had been, um, who had been severely ill than the people that had the milder cases, but they did see it. And so that's something that, you know, once again, our young people need to take into effect besides the fact that they can be, you know, of course, what they always hear and which some pay attention to and some don't, which is that they are also a vector where they can actually take the, they may be asymptomatic, but then they take it home and they then transmit it to, um, to someone else in the family that may not do as well as they they do and and that is definitely a given you can definitely see if you talk to people it's not uncommon for the whole family um, to get infected when one person brings it home it just depends on the family especially you know a lot of families are very touchy-feely so if you're not in a touchy-feely family where you guys don't hug and kiss and stuff like that you might be okay but if you are in one of those families where the first thing you do is come home and hug your grandma or your mom and all of that if you come home and you got it you can be spreading it very very easily remember with the coronavirus it's very um, easily transmitted Yes, it's very easily killed, but it's also very easily transmitted. And so um, that's where the proper hand washing, the wearing the face mask, the distancing is all important. Um, and a lot of things, that's one of the things I started to say that the, gov- that the, the mayor of Miami was mentioning is that many of those families, there's a, um, a, um, a, there's a lot of uh, four, four generations living in one house. And so when the young people are coming in um, and they bringing that virus in, they are potentially... Um, affecting the whole house and once again there are people that in the house that may not do as well let me see you guys are sending me notes so let me see what it is 
Yes, that's what I said. I said now that that we see that it's uh, now that we see that it may be affecting um, uh, the the men and their uh, testicles. I think that they'll definitely have to find a cure really quickly because guys won't do well with that. Let me see what Irene said. I'm sorry. Okay, so yes, let's talk about some debunks. Okay, so I there is something out there about people getting calls and being told that they tested positive and they never did a COVID test. I don't know that that's true. I would like to see the data on that. I find that highly um, unlikely um, because, um, let me tell you something, they're having the devil of a time keeping track of the people that they have to call. They're overwhelmed. So why on earth would they be looking for people um, to call and track down that they don't have to. Uh, trust me, the health department has no gain on that. You, once again, don't get into politics. And uh, I love Facebook. Obviously, I'm on Facebook. We are having this conversation on Facebook. So I obviously like Facebook, right? But Facebook has its positives. Facebook has its negatives. And I'm not I'm not saying it started on Facebook. I don't know where it started. Irene, Eileen, please send it to me. Let me see. Because if it's on Facebook, I'm sorry. There's been a lot of stuff. Um, out there. You cannot believe it. Just because somebody puts it out there doesn't mean it's true. There's a lot of people that have suddenly decided that this is their moment to be famous or to be whatever, and they're just putting stuff out. And then, unfortunately, this person gets it. They post it to their Facebook. There's a billion people. And I'm sorry, I'm just using Facebook. It could be Twitter. It could be any of these social media things. The beauty of social media is things get out very quickly. The negative is things get out very quickly and they're not vetted. So we don't know. So this could be just somebody that decided they just wanted to, they are um, anti-testing and they just want to put something out to create controversy. Um, it could be, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, and so I would, I would, tend to err on that aspect that there is someone out there that just decided that they were going to put that out there and then it has just gone um, crazy. And to put things in example, if you think that that doesn't happen, why were we in a toilet paper shortage for months? It started with one person posting one thing on Facebook about getting toilet paper. There was no toilet paper shortage anywhere else in the world but in the United States because of social media and people suddenly hearing that there was going to be a toilet paper run and so there was so it became a self-fulfilling prophecy from one person that maybe did it as a joke to begin with and didn't have any idea what the repercussions would be so please be careful when you're getting this information i understand there's a lot of stuff out there but there's a lot of people once again who are trying to politicize this who are um have their own agendas um, and, and whether they are, you know, feel rightfully that it is their responsibility to, um, spread the information or their thought process about things out into the, to the world, um, at large via, um, social media. I can tell you I've been tested now five times, um, and I've been negative every single time. So this idea that everybody that gets tested is positive is not true. We went through this last week. There is, um, there are, um, I'm not telling you that the tests um, are 100%. Nothing is, there's no test that's 100%. You find one, you show it to me. So that's been way before coronavirus. So, I mean, it's, there's always going to be false positives and false negatives. That's why if you, if there's a concern, you retest. Um, and so, and that's why, say, for healthcare professionals, they, once they are positive for, for coronavirus, they're not allowed to come back to work until they've had two negatives 24 hours apart. Why? Because what if that first one that says that they're negative is wrong? So we don't want to have um, someone who especially is a healthcare worker, and I, I, it should be all frontline workers, I do not know if that's true, um, that out there um, that could be potentially um, um, spreading um, the coronavirus unknowingly because they think that they're negative and they're not. And so that's because, not because we have nothing better to do, it's, t it's because we know that there are false positives and false negatives. But I can tell you for the people that think that there's all these false positives, there's just as many false negatives. I know personally people who tested negative 
uh, and definitely had coronavirus. And then subsequently, not only based on their symptoms, but then also subsequently did the antibody testing, which says that you have formed antibodies to the coronavirus, and that's positive. So you can't form antibodies to the virus if you never had it. And so just realize that when you hear these things, that there's always going to be two sides to the story. Try to weed through the politics. Try to read through the emotional stuff and try to stick with the facts and the facts and and you know there's not um what did we just say the numbers went up in um uh, uh florida from uh 327,000 to 402,000 um that's that's not you can't possibly say that that's all false tests it just can't happen so just be aware of that um and and you know it's confusing it's scary we're all scared there's a lot of emotion out there um just work with as, as many facts as you can work with um other things um you do know that um the 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 lean now with um like i said with the politicians as well as to kind of st they're starting to come around to encouraging that whole face mask thing so um it, it it's coming um the the other thing the republican um convention that was the big one that was going to be in jacksonville was canceled uh the the whole thing here and i'm sure it's occurring it, well it is occurring everywhere the cdc did come out and say that schools should be um reopened um the the different states are taking it on different ways here in florida it depends on what county you're in uh, orange county actually has three options uh, you can either send your kids to virtual school you can uh, send them to brick and mortar school or you can do a delay plan which is where you um, let the kids sit out for the fall assess the situation and then they can go back to um, regular school um, um, based on what's going on and just so you know that's what I've chosen to do and that's mainly because I am a frontline worker I cannot afford to um, have a coronavirus because that will shut me down um, and I, I I can't afford to shut my office down if, if at all possible so I can't afford for my daughter to go to school come home with it whether she gets ill or not and I don't certainly want her ill and I but if she gives it to me and it takes me down then that will um, affect a a lot of, of my will affect my patients will affect my personal park, pocketbook um, because I am a small business and um, and and also um, those around me so I have chosen to do that um, and just kind of watch and wait and see what happens we will be doing next week because it's such a hot topic I have been asked by several people to address it so what we're gonna do um, next week is go over um, I'm gonna uh, line up some people um, uh, probably a pediatrician uh, and a school board and uh and um a teacher or a principal and we're going to kind of have a little chit chat about all of this and and try to help to, to address some of the concerns about reopening to help people um, have a forum in which they can discuss that so that'll be next friday at four um and even though it will be probably um uh, floridians that are on the call i think it applies across the um the, the country because we're all dealing with this it's just that florida is supposed was supposed to be going back to school florida and um, georgia go back to school very early um, compared to most of the rest of the country and so this was something that was looming very quickly um, our kids were supposed to be back in i think in orange county i, th I believe it was the 10th i know it was that week um, and so now we're all pushed back to the 21st 24th um, and some schools are actually pushed back some of the private schools are pushing back into september um, as they wait and kind of get it prepared for it so that'll be next week so I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover as far as um, the updates. If I forgot it, I'll put it in the message for you guys. Um, the, um, oh, wait a minute. Did I miss something else? I can tell my family members not to hug and things like that. You're a first grade teacher. Are you? Right. You know it. You know it. You know it. Okay. So the, what she's saying is that I can tell my family members not to hug. And I'm sorry, I can't see who it is. Oh, I can't see it. It scrolled up. Um, I can tell my family members not to hug and things, but I am a first grade teacher. I know for a fact those children will be running to hug teachers they know when... Um, when face-to-face -face school opens. I know masks will be mandatory, but should... I like wear protective covering over my clothes as well, like a long apron or something. Hmm. Well, okay, so we will discuss that real quick. So 
the the no short answer is no um, I think that you're going to have to do a little policing. I, I would recommend to the teachers they do policing. And if you have a child that's got any kind of um, cold symptoms, you need to get them out of there. I mean, not, you know, kick them out. But I think you, you guys need to really be serious about it and tell the parents that they have to come get their child. Um, and so I'm hoping that that's something that the school will deal with. And we can talk about it more le- next week. I would not wear protective gear. What I do, I wear scrubs. And I'm not telling you to wear scrubs, but I'm just telling you. So I don't wear, like, I have all these clothes, and, and they're all sitting in the closet. Um, and so I just don't. I just, I don't want to have to deal with um, potentially having anything on me. And so I just wear uh, scrubs every single day, and those clothes come off immediately when I get home. And I go straight to the shower and shower and do my face. And I wash my glasses. I wash everything, earrings. I mean, I don't wash them, but I, I disinfect everything that has potentially been exposed um, during the day. And that would be my recommendation to you is that you pick your staple clothes that you don't care that much about that you can throw into the washing machine. Because once again, coronavirus is very easily killed. And so if you throw those clothes in right away and um, I actually have a hamper that I just put them all in and then at the end of the week I just wash them all together on really hot water. Um, and so that's my recommendation versus wearing um, uh, a covering um, like that. Uh, do make sure, I do recommend that you have some glasses even if you don't need them, maybe get some um, cute fake glasses um, just to have on your face. Uh, you can actually do that. You know, you can go to, like to Lens Crafters or any of those places or even, I guess, Walmart or something like that and just buy the glass frames. You don't have to have a prescription. Um, and like I said, they got some really nice ones out there. And, um, and because you do want to have an eye covering um, and you don't really want to walk around in, in goggles. That's going to flip the kids out. And then obviously there's got all sorts of cute masks. So try to find some cute masks if you're dealing with first graders. I don't know how you're going to keep first graders with masks on. So that's going to be quite interesting. And like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about all the school stuff next week because there's all this. Uh, there are some different studies about, you know, do the younger kids um, transmit as much as the older kids, blah, 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 blah. And, and we'll talk about the teachers and, and their concerns because, you know, uh, it's, it's really split. It's really split. I mean, there's the, the concern for the kids and getting them to school and blah, 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 blah. And then there's the concern, of course, to the health risk because the teachers are not little kids and the teachers can get it. And the teachers probably will get it. A lot of them will. And so the goal, once again, um, uh, for my, um, I consider my teachers first line, um, frontline workers. And I would recommend uh, that um, uh, we get you in, uh, do a consult on, uh, for immune protocol and get you, um, get you um, boosted up as, as much as possible before um, school starts um, so that we can get you as bulletproof as possible. Um, so that if heaven forbid you get it, that you don't, you're not one of the people that come severely ill. That's my recommendation for all it's worth. And like I said, that's what I do. Um, we have, we all follow these, my whole staff, we're following immune protocol all the time. So that takes us to, I told you guys I was going to talk about a subject. So today is supposed to be on melatonin. So let's do that real quick. Um, if you guys are okay with that and, um, oh, wait a minute, one more thing. Uh, they're so true. I'm planning to homeschool and work from home as much as I can. And I think that's fine. If you can afford to keep your child home, that may be something you want to do. This is going to be a very individualized um, decision, and there's not going to be a right or wrong. It's just going to be something that every parent is going to have to decide what's the best thing for their child. And then the good thing is that I think that the schools are trying to accommodate and give some options for um, reassessing. Um, someone told me in Lake County, I think it's every nine weeks you can reassess. So so I think it depends on the actual um place um so yeah definitely tune in next week if you have any concerns or if you have anybody that is facing concerns about going back to school because that's going to be the, the whole subject subject next week um so this is melatonin this is actually a melatonin sp- hold on guys where is it here we go um this is i i can't see if you can see it it looks like it's not facing the right way i think that's it so anyway this is a melatonin spray so what is um, melatonin? I mean, I think everybody kind of sort of knows, but melatonin is actually a hormone that is produced in your pi- pineal gland, which is in your brain. And it, um, um, it, um, um, oh no, no, 
here. So, um, so, and so basically it has many, many different functions. Um, and so people, uh, most people kind of think of melatonin in sleep and yes, Melatonin actually helps your uh, sleep very, very um, much so if it, it, in most people. So when, when is, it, it also is very good for your immune system, which is why we're discussing it because, you know, of all of the um, uh, coronavirus. And so we're going to kind of tie that in. So what does melatonin, um, first of all, it's produced, like I said, in the pineal gland. It's produced mostly at night. So one of the things that occurs is that in people that have difficulty sleeping, it becomes a vicious circle, right? As because if I have difficulty sleeping, then I'm producing less melatonin. And then if I'm producing less melatonin, I'm going to continue to have difficulty sleeping. So it just kind of starts to, to, to become a snowballing effect. And so that's why, um, it, and so it's, it's kind of neat that if you actually take melatonin, it can actually help you sleep, which then helps you to produce your own melatonin, which helps to make everything um, better. So that's a good thing. Um, it is uh, because melatonin will actually put you into a deeper sleep. It actually puts you into REM sleep and it can help you um, to uh, to get into a deeper state of sleep. So more, more restful. So you actually wake up and you actually feel more refreshed, even if you don't sleep as many hours. Uh, it, it also therefore helps with chronic um, fatigue, uh, helps with ex um, exhaustion syndromes. It helps with um, things that are influenced by um, not sleeping well, such as uh, migraines, such as um, you've got um, uh, uh, people, adults with attention deficit disorder, not just kids. Um, and so if you go back and look, a lot of those are, are not fitful sleepers. And so uh, melatonin is really good for that. It's uh, very good for the immune system. So it actually seems to have some anti-inflammatory properties to it. Um, so help with inflammation, but also it's really good for boosting your um, internal immune response. So you've got different immune responses. And I know we talked a little bit last week about the, you know, um, concerns about the antibodies, you know, that, you know, we were hoping that people that got coronavirus and then recover from it form antibodies and they're good um and i still think that the the majority of people once again are going to be good and 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 probably be able to survive i mean not survive but make it through this without that this first wave without getting it again i think that they probably will be susceptible to it if it comes back again um, in the fall or next year, um, because it'll probably be a little slightly different strain. That's my personal opinion. The data is pretty good, but there's some cases where they're saying that maybe it's not um, um, maintaining that the 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 antibodies are not maintaining um, for the um, uh, that the numbers go down, so that the antibody strength. Uh, response goes down the longer away from having coronavirus you had it also based on the severity so if you had a very mild case that you don't form as many antibodies as someone who was severely ill and we certainly don't want to become severely ill just to get antibodies that would not be a good thing so um, the data is still emerging every single day and that's why they're looking for vaccines and that's what the vaccines are going to do is produce antibodies so that your body can fight off and keep you from getting the virus now melatonin though the neat thing is it's going to work from a completely different mechanism okay so so even if you're not getting, um, you, we don't have a vaccine right now, you haven't had coronavirus, hopefully, um, or if you do and you, you're worried that maybe it's not, you know, the antibodies aren't going to stay in your system and that you're going to be susceptible again, this is another way to look at boosting your immune system. Um, melatonin helps to form um, it helps to boost your immune system by um, helping promote um, your natural killer cells. And so your T cells, and those are what fight viruses and bacteria from the inside. And, and so this is a really important thing. And so it helps with the production of that um, um, and, and other um, cellular things called granulocytes and macrophages, which also help to fight off um, all of these things and eat them up when they get into your system. It also helps with the whole, like I said, inflammatory process with the interleukins, which you've heard some about with, that has to do with the body's immune response. And so mediating the body's immune response so that it responds in a positive way against the, the in this particular case, the virus without going um, crazy. Um, and it's interesting because melatonin has been around. Um, they have studies back from 1926 when they noticed that when they, um, not to gross you out, but when they um, uh, isolated and, and took uh, and, um, 
segments of the pineal gland and they fed it to rats that they were actually less likely to get several infectious diseases when they were exposed to them. So this has been a long-standing thing. This isn't something new. This isn't something that's just dreamed up or anything like that. Um, now, um, when because it's a supplement, because it's not a medication, no one can promise you anything. It's all about supporting your immune system. It's not that if you take melatonin that I'm telling you that you're not going to get coronavirus. Please don't take it to that um, extreme. What I'm saying is that if you use it, it can help to boost your immune system, which your immune system can then help you to uh, fight off everything um, that you're exposed to on a daily basis, not just um, coronavirus. Now, there are different ways that you can get melatonin. Um, this is, like I said, a spray. And so most people will either swallow melatonin um, in a pill form or they will spray melatonin um, or put it or do a, a liquid, okay? And basically, so you what we say is we call it a sublingual root, which just means under the tongue. So um, swallowing, obviously you're going through your gut, so it's a different level of absorption. And so some people respond better to one than the other. Uh, and also it's a it's a, about quality of the product. So whenever you are getting products, um, there, is, there are always um, fillers and preservatives um, if it's based on the quality of the product. So the more fillers and preservatives that are in a product, the more likely you are to not get as much of a good response because you're not just getting the what you want, which in this particular case would be the melatonin, but you're also getting the other garbage that's been piled in there and your body doesn't know what to do with all that stuff. Melatonin, it knows what to do because it produces melatonin. So you always want to try to get as pure of a product as possible. Um, and like at, at the office, we try to weed through all of that and 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 only have stuff available that's really good um the when you do it um the the goal is is say if you're if you're having trouble falling asleep then you want to kind of do it um in the sublingual route because this is a more rapid absorption point so it's going to get into your system faster it's going to act faster um and also um um, you want to do it about an hour before you want to go to bed because if you do it right before you want to go to bed, it's, it's usually not necessarily um, uh, going to kick in immediately. Um, but um, when it works, it's very nice and it's a nice gentle sleep compared to like say, you know, you got all these people that are taking Ambien and all these um, medications uh, and uh, they, they can, A, don't get me started on Ambien. Ambien is not a good drug, but as far as I'm concerned, and sorry, Ambien people, but, um, and if you're on it, you know it's not a good drug, but it does help you sleep. I understand that, but there's, you know, it's just like, I always tell people, there's all sorts of ways you can get to things, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best way to get to things, and, and, and what the goal is, is to, if in this particular case, is to, um, aside if you were using melatonin for sleep is to get the best sleep you can um, with the least amount of side effects. We don't want to actually create new problems treating old, right? And so we want to give our bodies, um, when we're trying to um, boost um, our bodies and make them healthy, we want to give ourselves as much natural stuff as possible versus giving ourselves foreign stuff. Um, because when you give yourself foreign stuff, your body doesn't know what to do with it. And sometimes it gets rid of it. Sometimes it just walls it off into your fat stores. And then it's just sitting there and that can be you know a part of the bane of all these things that you know one of the reasons why the American uh, people are so unhealthy is because we do eat a lot of processed foods and that goes for once again our supplements and stuff like that they are processed and a lot of times they start with the pure product but by the time they get to the end production it's it's very little in there or nothing in there um, so are the capsules good? Yeah, the capsules you can find if you have find a, a quality melatonin, then the capsules are good. And once again, because they have to be absorbed through your stomach, it's a delayed release on those. So the capsules are really good for the people that say, I fall asleep like a rock, but then I have trouble staying asleep. So that's where the capsules are really good. Because of the delay, usually in the absorption, um, the capsules are not the best to do um, if you're trying to fall asleep, unless you, you have to, I mean, you can, but you just have to figure out when do I need to take it um, compared to when I want to go to bed. 
Um, and so an hour might be good enough. It might need two hours, uh, what have you. This one, um, this particular one, um, we've been seeing some really good results uh, with, I always guinea pig things before I put them on the shelf. And um, this one seems to be really good with actually putting you to sleep, but also helping to stay asleep. So we're really excited about that, even though it's in the sublingual route, that it seems to be working kind of for both um, types of sleep because there are two different um, uh, uh, types of insomnia. The... Um, the other thing is is dosing. I'm not here to prescribe dosing for you guys because obviously I don't know who is, is on the call. And uh, so everyone is different and it depends on what other things you're putting in your body, both medications as well as other supplements as far as how you dose yourself. What I will tell you is that um, you need to watch out one of the side effects of melatonin and once again it can also be product driven and what other things are being put in there as far as the fillers and preservatives but one of the side effects the main side effect is nightmares and so you do not want those uh, they are not pretty I can tell you that um, most people if they get them they are uh, um, are not happy with them um, to the point some people just throw the bottle away um, because they're that bad so uh, what we do is you don't start off and say oh well you know what if one spray is gonna work I'm gonna use 10 uh, 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 uh. don't do that so with melatonin you definitely want to start off low and work yourself up um, and so you start off at the, at the lower dose um, usually like say um, I, if you know your lightweight, you start off at one milligram. That's actually hard to find. Um, this one, I believe, is three milligrams. Yes, so this is three milligrams per spray, which is a nice starting point. And then you do that for like at least four nights before you go jumping up. And then you jump up maybe another, maybe double your dose and do that for another four nights. And then if I'm still not sleeping, and you can work your way up. If your dreams start to get a little kooky, though, you probably need to hold still um, because, like I said, remember that melatonin is going to put you into that deeper REM sleep, so you're going to dream more vividly. So that's a good thing. And so that means you get to wake up and actually remember your dream, which is kind of fun. Um, and so, you know, dreams aren't necessarily, um, they don't make sense um, on a good day. But if they're starting to get very eccentric, um, then you need to kind of be careful um, because the next step might be the nightmares. If you do overdo it, you do end up in nightmare land, don't throw your bottle away. If you were actually sleeping really, if it was helping you otherwise, or if you want to use this to help to boost your immune system and your killer T cells, then you don't need to throw it away. Um, you need to actually just lower it back down to the dose where you weren't having the nightmares. Conversely, once again, if you're on three milligrams of melatonin and that caused my nightmares off the bat, do the research, find a one milligram and get the one milligram. Also, once again, change the brand. So there's there's different things. It's not that you produce melatonin. So melatonin by itself is not a bad thing. And melatonin by itself should not cause the nightmares. It's probably more of the dosing and or the product. But, you know, is there, you know, are there people that can't take it? Of course there are. There's always going to be people that can't take anything. But on a on generally... Um, if you get the right one, you can sleep very soundly and you feel markedly better. And once again, you're then producing your own melatonin as well. So it just kind of snowballs there and it makes them um, so you're and, and always what you produce is the best thing. So you're producing, you're boosting your immune system because your body's functioning better. Um, and, and you're also giving yourself something to help you. So it kind of goes like that. So anyway, if there's no questions about melatonin, then I'm going to let you guys go because like I told you before, my goal is it was supposed to be a half an hour, but we still keep dragging it out. But that's okay. Um, as long as it's as, as you guys are finding it beneficial, I'm fine with that. But I really don't want to go in over an hour because I do value your time. And it is Friday afternoon. And I know that even though we, I guess we don't have many places to go, um, <laughs> but uh, not, like, um, not like we used to on a Friday night. But I'm sure there's a Zoom call you need to get on or something like that. So take care of yourselves. Um, it is summertime. Do put your feet in the sand. Do get out and commune with nature. Um, you know, uh, um, I don't think my brother will kill me for telling you this, but he had trouble sleeping the other night, and I told him he says I'm going to go for a drive. I said no, 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 no. Put your feet on the pavement. Take your take your take your shoes off. Walk barefoot. Go through the grass. Go through the sand. Go through the dirt. Find something. Connect with the earth and move. Um, and 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 you will feel markedly better. There's nothing like um, being out in nature, even if you think that it's not a good thing. And sun is good therapy for you. 
Um, it is actually um, exercise is a natural de-stressor. So don't forget that. Watch what you're eating. Um, um, get your sleep. Get your sleep. Get your sleep. Um, and um, if if you if you think you know that you'd like to try melatonin. I would definitely give it a whirl. I think that it's definitely good, once again, for your immune system plus for your overall good health. So I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Stay healthy. I'll see you next week, and we will tackle the whole what to do with our kids and coronavirus and back to school. Take care.